For Henry, life as a dog was not so bad. It was simpler, actually. Pleasures came so easily. He didn't have to worry about bills, clients, or shaving anymore. Even though his family jewels were gone, he was now able to lick himself freely. That was something that had been both physically and socially impossible before. Henry clumsily turned the page of this month's issue of Dog Fancy with one paw and continued to peruse its contents. It was so nice of Rhonda to subscribe to these magazines for him. She even found a TV remote designed for senior citizens. Its enormous buttons made it much easier for him to change the channels when she was out on a job. Just then, Rhonda burst through the door, tossing her purse onto a nearby couch, and then collapsed next to it. Oh my goodness, Henry, you would not believe what the bride made her bridesmaids wear for her wedding. It was mind-boggling. Two words, sailor outfits, she said. Henry left the magazine on the floor and jumped onto the couch next to her. She rubbed his head and resumed her story. I only had to speak to her a few times, but I think that woman was probably a bridezilla. Thank goodness, I just had to deal with the wedding planner most of the time, and he looked about ready to hang himself. She must be one of those hotty toddy types who refused to speak to the quote-unquote help. Rhonda then lifted a pinky to emphasize her point. Henry lifted a paw in solidarity, imagining he had a pinky. He still missed fingers. Rhonda then laughed and patted him on the shoulder. You tell him, Henry, I'm a catering manager, and yet, after this wedding, I feel like a bit of a lawn cook, she said. She sat for a moment, then she shrugged. No matter, it's over now, and I got my big fat paycheck. And do you know what you get, Henry? She asked. Henry leapt off the couch and danced at her feet with excitement. This was his favorite part. He waited impatiently as Rhonda disappeared into the garage. He heard the car door slam, and soon she reappeared, with two giant hotel pans balanced carefully in her arms. She struggled with the door, which had springs on its hinges to shut itself. Henry dashed to her aid and pushed the door open with his body. What a gentleman you are, Rhonda exclaimed as she strolled through the doorway and into the kitchen. I hope you don't mind, but I invited some company over tonight. These leftovers are far too good not to share, she said. Henry didn't really want to share his meal with anyone, but it wasn't like these treats were rare occasions. There were definite perks when your human companion is a caterer. Rhonda then dashed into the bathroom to clean up, and Henry trotted after her. She spun around at the doorway, and Henry stopped in his tracks. Oh, no, 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 you don't, Henry. You can try all you like, but you're not getting one luxurious glance, she said. The door then shut firmly, and Henry went back to the kitchen to fill his nose with the heavenly smells of the wedding food. An hour later, the doorbell rang, and Henry followed Rhonda to the door. It was Abby. The two women embraced in greeting, and then Abby crouched down to pet him. Hi, Henry. Did you miss me? She asked. He put his paws onto her shoulder and licked her face. He actually did miss this quirky woman, even though she was a terrible cook, and she often forgot about him while she was working. She genuinely cared about him, and it wouldn't have been so terrible to have ended up with her. Abby entered the room, followed closely by Daniel, who ruffled Henry's fur as he passed. Daniel was not so bad after all, now that he was no longer a rival. Abby seemed happier. He wondered if it was all because Daniel was finally able to get his hands up her dress without being interrupted. Henry snickered at that thought. 
he regretted nothing. Before long, they were all seated around the dining table, plates of scrumptious delights in front of their beaming faces. Henry had his own plate on the floor next to Rhonda. It was heaped just as high as everyone else's. Before pushing his nose into the laden plate, Henry contemplated the jovial group before him. They joked, they laughed, and they teased, faces glowing with broad smiles. Yes, life was good here.